Having left Silas and Timothy to catch up with him later, Paul found himself all alone here in Athens. Although its days of supreme glory were past, it was still the greatest university city in the world, to which men seeking learning came from far and near. It was a city of many gods. It's said that there were more statues of the gods here in Athens than in the whole of the rest of Greece put together, and that it was easier to meet a god in Athens than to meet a man. People met to talk in this great city square. In fact, in Athens, they did little else. It was a questioning, decadent city and academically snobbish. But Paul had little regard for such empty culture. He must have observed all the commercialization of knowledge and history, all the dishonesty and empty pride of a city living on its past. He was disturbed because the people of Athens were looking for truth in the wrong direction. Just imagine Paul all alone here, waiting for Silas and Timothy in this great city. All around him are the trappings of Greek history, culture and religion. How on earth was he to make any difference? There was the then all-glorious Parthenon, already nearly 500 years old in Paul's day. It was built to house the statue of the goddess Athene, an object of the very greatest devotion. West of it, the sculpted maidens, or caryatids, were used in place of columns on the south porch of the Erechtheum. Then there was the Panathenic Way, along which came a procession once every four years to present a new robe for the primitive wooden image of Athene. The procession made its way up the rock, through the great gateway, and out onto the Acropolis itself. At the foot of the Acropolis is the Theatre of Dionysus, where the great dramas of classical Athens were staged. It's the birthplace of Greek tragedy, and not far beyond it, only 15 columns remain of the original 104 of the Temple of Olympian Zeus, which although begun in the 6th century BC, was only just being completed in Paul's day. The Temple of Hephaestus, the God of Fire, is the best preserved of all the temples in Athens because it was later transformed into a Christian church. The great Athenian marketplace, the Agora, formed the political heart of ancient Athens from 600 BC. Democracy was practiced here in the Bouloiterium and also in the law courts and in the open air. These excavations of the Agora which began in the 1930s, have revealed these vast remains of a complex array of public buildings and colonnades. The Stoa of Attalos, on its eastern side, was rebuilt in the 1950s using the original foundations and ancient materials. Today, it contains a museum, which reveals the great sophistication of ancient Greece. The building itself gives a vivid impression of the sheer magnificence of the city of Paul's day. Its cool colonnade also offers welcome relief from the heat of the midday sun. <laughs>